Before we start, hit the like, share this, subscribe, hit the cash app, please. R reward me for watching this. Um, you know, people on this channel, they love when I review AEW or wrestling currently because wrestling is trash and I bring humor to it, context, perspective, so on and so forth. I'm brilliant. But, um, you know, I wasn't watching AEW. I haven't watched this show. I don't, I don't know when the last time I watched this show. Um, but I heard that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I heard that pay-per-view was happening, uh, this Saturday or Sunday or some shit. And, um, so I said, you know what? I'll humor myself and I'll watch this show. You know, I, I thought that, you know, um, if there's one show where they'll put a real effort to drive you to spend your dollar, it would be a go home show. Why would I think this with current wrestling? It's like when you stop watching it, and then the idea to tune back in comes. The idea comes with like hope that, oh, maybe, maybe it improved. Maybe they figured something out. And it, it never is. See, this is the curse of being a, a wrestling fan of past days when it was good. This is the curse. This is the curse. And that curse always brings you back. But let's get into the show. Now, um, I have more important things in my life than caring about uh this current wrestling trash so i was like 15 minutes late to this show but apparently it was just some long ass match with with some mid card losers who cares so when i tune in some match just ended i don't even remember who it was and then immediately as soon as i tune in this would happen as soon as i tune in they cut to some backstage video of dean ambrose bleeding again Bleeding again. I mean, he, he he's a one-man Red Cross. I mean, my God. It's, it, it's like, he he's still doing the fake tough, fake crazy, fake Steve Austin, fake Terry Funk gimmick. No one believes you. If someone just out of nowhere in the crowd slapped him in the face, he would just stand there stunned. He's not Bruiser Brody where he would beat the shit out of you, swing at you. No, he's, it's like, oh my God. It's like, these wrestlers, they're, they're playing wrestlers. They're not being wrestlers, they're playing. The Miz is the greatest example of this. But let's not get into another company. Let's stick to this shit show. So as soon as I tune in, of course, Ambrose is in a hallway, bleeding, shaking, screaming about something. I think I turned the channel. I turned back. They're having some eighty man uh, uh, eighty man ladder match. A thousand people. the The ladders are big as hell. Why? So it's like okay, so ladder match. Um, is it a belt on the line? No. A contract? No. A sack of money? No. It's some big like golden ring or some shit. Like, what is this? I paid this match the attention it deserved, which is none. Uh, the end of the match, some big Asian, which is just hysterical. <laughs> A giant Asian. <laughs> Drink my water. And uh, some, some Asians on a ladder. And and, 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 and then, like, some, some the, the guy Jericho beat, the Andretti... It's like, who who are these people, and why would they be in this match? I assume this match is for, like, some contendership, some 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 alleged meaning, but you have, like, jobbers in it, and, of course, AEW, we gotta put some Japanese guy in it. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so, anyway, I'm, I'm watching this match, and a little Sammy Guevara has some spot where he, he him and, and that Garcia guy, they they beat some they beat somebody's ass or some shit. I think it was the Andretti guy. I don't know. They do a spot where they're beating up this guy on the outside. Now the entire time, see, this is psychology. The point of wrestling is to win the match. And to win as soon as possible. So there's a spot in the match, everyone is knocked out, but Sammy Guevara is up. 
And instead of using the ladder to get the big golden ring, he says, no, I'm going to set up a ladder on the outside and jump off the ladder to kill this guy. The amount of time this took, if this had logic, he could have got a ladder in the ring and won the match. No, they booked this so they can insult the audience because it's going to take him 20 years to set up a ladder, climb it, and then do a swan time like Jeff Hardy at WrestleMania 2000. This company, like all current wrestling, they love to insult the audience's intelligence. It's a ladder match to get this ring. You could win it. No, we're indie marks. We have to do a spot. Sammy Guevara kills himself. Then Garcia picks him up, throws him in the ring. Well, he's a dead man in a ring. So how is he supposed to get the big gold ring? Well, he can't. So then Big Asian is on the ladder. And then Big Powerhouse Hobbs comes in. He did the most unsafe, indie-rific, reckless shoulder tackle into the ladder. The Asian guy falls to like his death. He did in a way where now the ladder is broken. So then to, the, to insult the audience again, a referee comes in and holds the ladder so Powerhouse can, can climb it. Then two more referees. So now there's three referees holding a ladder. Okay, so the stupidity and nonsense is referees helping someone win. Okay, in what sport would the referee blatantly help someone win? What sport? No, but in AEW, the referees are holding the ladder so this guy can walk up it. Why would that happen? No one in this company has any instincts. If he had instincts, he would notice the ladder's broken. Let me go get a working one outside the ring. Everyone is laid out. He could have done that. No, and even the camera people tried to cut to the crowd. Like you didn't notice there were referees holding the... I mean, this is it's like the curse of wrestling. You stop watching... And then you think, hey, you know, wrestling's on. Maybe it'll be watchable. Maybe maybe it won't be classic. Maybe it won't be great. Maybe it won't be good, but maybe it's watchable. It's not even that. This is the curse of being a wrestling fan. Drink my water. This is the curse. So anyway, Hobbs gets the ring. And it, even when he got up there to get the ring, it, lo it looked like he didn't know how to take it off the hook. I mean... Got the idiot announcers as usual. Where is JR? You know, um, I was gonna make a video about this. You know, uh Jim Ross. The reason that he stayed in WWE all those years when they were abusing him, yelling at him, you know, berating him. Is it berate or berate? Berate? What whatever. When they were humiliating him, dis disrespecting him on camera and off. The reason he always stayed and pulled and he, he put up with all the nonsense is because WWE was giving him health insurance. They're paying his health insurance because he's always had he's always had health issues. That's the reason why he never went to TNA. He was close to going to TNA, but usually as usual with TNA, there was that one deal breaker they would not give you. Or wasn't going to be guaranteed or whatever. So that's why he didn't go to TNA. They could not guarantee him having paid health insurance. Plus, he was always a mark for McMahon and wanted to go back, even though he was he was abused. So whatever. But uh, that's the main reason why he's in AEW. So he can call wrestling. No one will yell in his headset. But its number one reason is the health insurance. But uh, whatever. Back to this show, <clears throat> which I don't believe Jr. was on. Wardlow comes out when how when uh Powerhouse Hobbs is celebrating his ring win, and Ward to me Wardlow he doesn't look right with short hair. I he looked way better when he had his hair just tied up like that, like he he doesn't look right with his haircut. He he needs to go like fully shaved head. This like high top, fade, no, um, he's like killing security guards. Like this happens all the time. Oh my god. Then they had some trash interview with some losers backstage, who cares? Caved in chest Jericho comes out. It's like this show is just a bunch of shit happening. Nothing gets a chance to breathe. It's just one thing happens, another thing happens, another thing happens, another thing happens. So Jericho's gimmick is 
He just fakes his jobbers every week. Why? Why? Um, Jack Swagger still has that fucking can go. Why? Adam Page is outside doing another Dawson's Creek promo. He, he he's like he's like a dramatic extra on Boy Meets World. My God. Christian comes out in a turtleneck again. He's interviewed by Moxley's whore pale wife. She's Canadian. Jungle Boy appears on the screen, and now Jungle Boy is being booked like The Undertaker. Jungle Boy is in a in a cemetery digging a grave. So Jungle Boy is now Mark Calloway in 96 before the Buried Alive match with Mankind. Th- this is Tony Khan's booking. You know what Tony Khan's booking? This is, you know, this is Tony Khan's booking philosophy. The smaller you are, the more he books you like a giant. Remember, remember a few months ago, Taz's son Hook comes out, and he scares away Big Kaz. That that's Tony Khan's booking. The smaller you are, the more he books you like a giant, and the bigger you are, the more he books you like a cruiserweight. Big Kaz runs from Taz's son. Brian Cage is losing to to Jungle Boy and Daniel Bryan. <laughs> okay, in a real fight. Who would win, Daniel Bryan or Brian Cage? Thank you, all the marks who just said Daniel Bryan. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're the same people you think if Mayweather fought Deontay Wilder, Mayweather would win. Yeah, same stupid motherfuckers who would say that. <laughs> oh, God. So, Jungle Boy's the dead man, a one man ministry. The woman's champ with the big ass hater and Britt Baker doing an interview. Who cares? Matt Hardy. I, I, I like change the channel again. Then I tune back. Matt Hardy is gray haired. Matt Hardy is old. You know, they used, they used to call him Fat Hardy. Anyway, he's old now and he's facing Taz's Peter Parker built son hook. Who cares? Stokely Carmichael. I think that's his name. This guy is trash. He doesn't understand how to have a consistent look or attire. Every week, he he dresses like, oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. He, he's dressing like a Black Panther now. Who the fuck wears a beret in the two thousand twenties? Oh my god. This company is embarrassing. This company is insulting. Stokely Hathaway or Carmichael, what is this guy's name? He's meaningless. He serves no purpose. He's not a good talker. But he's supposed to be the lead manager in this company. This show was terrible. <clears throat> Excuse me. This show was terrible. What about this episode would make you purchase the pay-per-view or illegally stream it? What? Alistair Black's demonic group stole some tag trinkets earlier versus the inferior... Who cares? Allegedly, uh, Omega and the Young Bucks contract is coming up the same time as MJF. If if those four leave, what was the point of this company? <laughs> Imagine this time next year, Omega, the Young Bucks, and MJF is gone. What was the point of making this company? I guess it was just to make Excalibur a national announcer. Anyway, uh, Alistair Black, he's a, he's a Satanist, a devil worshiper. And uh, that Zelina Vega, she smells like Goya seasoning. Anyway, Paige and her zipper face come down with uh, the carpet muncher, Tony Storms. She's a mark. Tony Storms, she's one of these marks. All she wants to do is have 40-minute matches. She doesn't want to learn how to talk. She has no personality. and she, You can tell she gets mad when she has to lose a match or a belt. But anyway, Storms, she faces the daughter who got kidnapped in the first rush hour at Rio. And, um, who cares? Then, uh, some midget started fighting Cesaro, and they had, like, some 80-man tag team gauntlet or some shit. Like, things just happen on this show. The, the commentary is dumb. It's a long match, Skip. The end segment was supposed to be MJF and Danielson to sell the pay-per-view. Two midgets arguing about a belt. The last time they had a pay-per-view, they tried to have MJF and Moxley like sell it in the last segment, and it was horrible and awkward. MJF, he's played out. 
He's repetitive now. A lot of his shit ha has never gotten over, actually. It's just he was so strong talking that you forget. Th that stupid ring has never gotten over. It never will. His stupid nickname for his belt will never get over. His orange tan will never get over. Every other week he's doing his his promo is some story about how he got bullied in high school. Okay, why would that make him a heel? Wouldn't that make him like sympathetic? His whole life story, he's a loser. That doesn't really make him a heel. But of course, no one books in this company, no one writes in this company, no one corrects anything in this company. There are a bunch of marks from the Observer Forum. Um, just two angry midgets arguing over this Iron Man match for like the last three months. And then this segment is supposed to sell the show. But um, when you look at the clock, Tony Khan has been doing this show for four years and still doesn't get how to format a TV show. This is supposed to be your big segment to sell the pay-per-view. How can you do that when they had to rush this segment because they were in commercial and they came out of commercial at 9.56? They come out of commercial at 9.55, 9.56. Danielson has to walk down. MJF has to walk down. This segment was Danielson is screaming for like three minutes. MJF did not say a word. And then it went off the air. Who the fuck booked this? You have the best wrestler on earth, MJF. He's the best talker. He's redundant. A lot of his shit is corny or doesn't get over. But he's still the best talker. That's how good he is. Some of his shit is just, it, it will never get over. But he's the best talker still. You had a, a go-home segment to sell the pay-per-view. And he didn't say a word. He, he was made to look stupid on the ramp for four minutes, and then the show ended. Why would this episode make you want to buy the pay-per-view? I had, like, you know, in my notes, I had, like, jokes about how Danielson's wife is a whore who used to shit in hotel sinks and had some affair with Teddy Atlas or Tony Atlas or some Atlas, but I, I can't even get my jokes in. Danielson said the word fuck at the end and they had to like blur it out and then they played like some awkward sound to blur it out. I mean, this this this, this is trash, man. That's, that's another trope in wrestling in the last uh, 10 years. When it's the go-home show, that's when we're going to have cussing. I re like, if you remember in the Cena era, whenever it was a go-home show, that's when Cena would do, I'm going to kick your ass. Go back and watch any go-home show of Raw in the last like 15 years. They always had Cena, he all of a sudden learned to cuss in the go-home show. He'd always say, I'm going to kick your ass, beat your ass. Cena learned the word ass every four weeks. So this is the same thing, except Damos is going to say fuck. The, the word of this company is usually shit, but he said fuck. Oh my God, Brian Damos said fuck. That's going to make me buy a pay-per-view. This was a shit show. This was embarrassing. Um... If you people want me to watch the pay-per-view this weekend, you have to donate to the Cash App and leave a message saying, for the pay-per-view, I am not going to buy this pay-per-view. I'm not even going to waste my time looking for an illegal stream, even though I do have the link. <laughs> Don't ask for it. I'm not going to give it to you, but I do have a link. It always works. <laughs> I can't believe they ever shut this site down, but um, it always works, my link. But um, if you want me to review this pay-per-view, hit the Cash App. If you want me to review any wrestling from now on, hit the Cash App. Um, other, other than someone donating to the cash app for that, the next review might be WrestleMania 39 might be, I have a headache just thinking about watching that trash, but, um, and that's like what in a month I might review that one. I don't know if you want WrestleMania reviewed, hit the cash app. Um, but, uh, like share, subscribe this company, nothing has changed. I didn't expect it to, but. That's what it is. Hopefully the people that have been following this channel, they enjoyed this review. I don't know how funny this was compared to the other classics. My my wrestling reviews in this channel are classics. If, if you're just finding this video, go check the other wrestling reviews, the classics. But um, that is it.